whether you are going to roll up your sleeves and paint along with me, or if you're just going to kick back, sip a cup of tea, relax, and just learn and be inspired and um, start some glass painting coming up. So just give us a couple of minutes here. Hello? Yes? <laughs> Hello, whoever that was. Hi. Don't me. No. Okay, so I'm hearing there's people from Nebraska, from California, which I'm a California native. Hi. Um, Arkansas. How cool. So I don't feel like I'm here crafting alone, you guys. I'm, I have you guys here with me. Here in Lexington, Kentucky, it's super dark out and totally stormy and rainy. So to me, it's fun being indoors and, you know, doing something crafty. Should we get started? Well, I think let's give it another minute. Okay. Yeah. Just one more minute, guys. Gather up your stuff, your glass paint, your vases, and whatever shape you like. Um, hopefully you have a little crafting area all set up, ready to go. If I get started. Oh, okay. All right, you guys, we're going to start. There's a lot to cover today. It's going to be fun. Uh, I'm used to doing 10 to 12 minute Facebook Lives. So here for this Michaels online community classroom, we're going to go, you know, about 45 minutes, which is great because again, there's so much to cover. I'm so happy all of you guys are here. We're going to start with this vase. So it does look pretty complex. Uh, it has like an abstract art uh, look to it. And what we're going to do is just sort of take you through the motions, take you through the steps. Uh, again, all of these vases are from Michaels. They have a huge selection. I actually love their glass aisle. So this is the first step here, which I'm going to be demoing. Uh, this is two coats. So you could see our, our glass paint. It covers really, really nicely. Um, this just being, you know, clear glass, that's what two coats looks like. The colors are super, super rich, super vibrant. And as you can see, there's a satin finish. This has a really nice satin finish. We still have our gloss enamels. I know a lot of you absolutely love our gloss enamels. This is a different look. This is not taking the place of the gloss enamels. It's just a new uh, version, you know, totally different. Okay, so we're going to set that aside and we're going to start this process here. Okay, let me grab a vase. We'll do this one. So both of these started just like this one, just clear glass. And what you want to use is a nice, soft, bristled brush. It works best for glass paint. This one is nice and soft. Um, and we're going to be starting with the flat brush. And you're going to pick any colors. Of course, we already selected a really pretty color palette. I'm going to be starting with the coral. Give it a little shake. Put it right on my palette. And a little bit of white. So I'm taking my brush and I'm going to double dip, for lack of a better word here. And my suggestion, you guys, for this is don't overthink it. Just totally start brushing. And I'm going to go in just a random direction. Look at, look at that coverage, guys. Super good. And I'm just going to double dip again. And if you forget which side you dipped in the white and which side you dipped in the coral, it kind of doesn't matter. You're going for a super random effect. So there's that. And we're going to turn it over to the other side and do a little more. And we'll just do a fun shape. Don't overthink it, just go. That's the best suggestion I can give you on this one. So here, there's two pops of color, and we're just going to keep moving. 
Let's see, how about the light blue, which is really, really pretty. I hope everyone has a good view of what I'm doing here. So here again, it's half white and half light blue. Don't overthink it, just sort of go. And you know what's funny, you guys, instead of starting with the simplest out of the five techniques we're doing today, I'm starting with the most complex one. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason for that. We're going to come back to it to finish it off. But. And I'm probably not going to paint the entire vase, but I do want to do maybe one more color. But see, it doesn't really look like much, does it? But we're getting there. And did you see how fast it sort of moves along? And these three are not meant to be matchy-matchy. The colors are gonna match, but the design is certainly not gonna be matched or mimicked or anything like that. In fact, it'll look better if, if it's not too matchy-matchy. There's some green. And again, I'm gonna double dip. I'm gonna go into the white and go into the green. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask as I'm painting. I'm a really good multitasker. I could paint and ask mm -hmm. and answer questions, you guys. I hope some people are just asking what product it is. Oh, okay. I will show it again. This is new for DecoArt, and it's simply called DecoArt Glass Paint. So very straightforward. You look at the bottle, you know exactly what you're getting. Uh, Michaels carries 20 gorgeous colors. This is the mint, which is one of my favorites. But yeah, it's DecoArt Glass Paint. Um, I also wanted to mention that they're completely intermixable, so you can mix your own colors. I always like to double up on my whites. I happen to love pastels. And of course, a lot of pastels come in this line, but keep in mind, you know, if you have, uh, if you double up on your whites, you can pick up your primaries and make pastels, which is really nice. So I'm gonna stop right about there. This is just so you can get an idea of what one coat looks like. I'm, I'm gonna set it aside. And we're going to move on to this one, which already has two coats. And as you can see, there's no rhyme or reason, but we're trying to get here. And if you could see the difference, this one just has a much softer look. And then, of course, we added the little um, dots there just for interest. And it's different. It doesn't even have dots all the way around, just extremely random. I've got two good questions coming up. Okay, so I'm going to set that one aside and show you how to soften the color. Ooh, that was close. Sorry, guys. <laughs> that one just decided to go dance over there. Um, okay, so this is pretty, you know, you can stop there, but I really am going for a softer look. So I'm going to take the white. Hey, Flock, could you tell everyone how long it takes to cure and what you bake it at? Well, it takes, what you want to do is let it set out for four days, and you're going to bake it for 30 minutes at 275. Now, another question that's going to come in is, do you have to bake it? The answer is no, you don't have to bake it. Um, as a matter of fact, I may or may not bake my bases, but if I'm making a coffee mug or something that I want to rush, run through the dishwasher, I am, I am absolutely going to bake it. Okay, so because this covers really, really well, you want to make sure that you're saturating your brush before dipping into that white. And then I'm just going to come in and just soften it. And it sort of brings all of the colors together. I, I, I move a lot when I paint. Sorry, guys. I hope everyone has a really good view. And, and how long should you wait before applying the second coat? How long does it take to dry? You know what? That's a great question. And it depends on like your climate. If, if you're somewhere where you have your AC on real high, it's going to take a little bit longer. If you're somewhere where it's warm and you have your heater on, it will be faster. But I'm going to say um, I would go ahead and apply a coat like at 30 or 35 minutes. You just want to touch it and make sure that it's not tacky. So as you can see, guys, it's not completely changing the look of, of the vase. It's just softening the colors a tiny bit.
And if you like bold, of course, you, you would, you know, skip this part. I just like it really pastel. Okay, I think I'm going to stop right about there and I'll give it a little whirl here so you could see. And that was just white paint? Yes, well, it was white paint with water. Um, if you were to just apply the white paint, it would be, you know, more of a solid coverage. So, so I'm going to set this aside. Um, out of all the ones we're doing today, guys, this is the most complex. And as you could see, it was super easy. I'm going to set it aside and we're moving on to the next technique. Awesome. Okay. So here we go. I have a few samples of this. And out of all the techniques we're going to be doing today, this is my favorite. Look at that. And it's my favorite for many reasons. Number one, it reminds me of art glass or of like a Murano glass. Um, number two, if you can do a little brush stroke, you can do this. And I like all the variations uh, that you could do here. I'm using a really tiny brush, so you get this very dainty look. And it's fairly sparse. But here, I went in really tight. I call this my rainbow swirl. <coughs> oh, sorry, I know that's a little loud. But, you know, the other thing is you sort of just go, 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 go. You don't rinse your brush in between. And I'm gonna demo this. So hopefully you guys are following along, having fun, learning, and painting. Okay, let's do this little guy. By the way, I did want to say something really cool about Michael's. So, you know, we're all in quarantine. We're all having to just sort of place our orders online. I placed my order online for all of these vases. A couple of hours later, got an email, your order's ready. I drove my truck over to Michael's, opened up my back um, door, the back seat door, and they came right out and just put it in the cart for me. It was so easy, so fast. So thank you, Michael's, for that. <laughs> Okay, we're going to pick colors. Ah. If you know me, I'm a pink person and it's really hard for me to not use pink. <laughs> but do you guys have any suggestions? Do you want to maybe pick a couple colors? If not, I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to go for it. Okay, guys, we're going to do fuchsia ombre up to the pink. You got to for purple. Oh, purple. Mm -hmm. The soft violet is super pretty, you guys. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to take some of the fuchsia. Quick question. Bob. Yeah, um, what's up, Jennifer? They want to know if you need to let the paint dry between coats, or is will you pull off the first coat if you're applying the second coat? That's a great question. It has to be dry to the touch, and it can't be tacky. Also, the softer your brush, the more of a chance that you're not going to pull up the, the first coat. So remember, you guys, soft brush is the way to go. Don't apply a second coat until the first coat is dry to the touch and not tacky. And because someone mentioned the purple, we are going to use the soft violet. Now, I do want to say that this requires, I'm not the most patient designer in the world. This does require a little bit of patience. If you find that you don't have a lot of patience and you kind of want to zoom through this, just get a bigger brush. <laughs> I like dainty, you guys, and to me it's worth taking the extra time, but no, just use a bigger brush. Okay, here we go. Dipping into that fuchsia. I'm going to put it upside down. Oh, and here's another tip. Um, when you're working with clear glass, especially this design, if you can, take a piece of plain white paper, roll it up, and, and stick it in there. That way you're not sort of seeing the backside of what you're painting, which can be a little bit distracting. But um, I just, I love this, you guys. You're literally, you know, picking up a vase 
that's just a couple of dollars, like this, this tiny one here. And, you know, we're going to completely transform the look and make it giftable. Like, can you imagine doing a set of these little baby vases in the rainbow from that soft lilac all the way up to pink? How cute would that be? Mm -hmm. And then just put one single flower in, in each one, you know. So much you could do. So a lot of folks are asking if you need to prepare the glass surface. Oh, that's painting. a good question, you guys. And um, I probably should have started with that. So there's, a, I'm glad you asked that and I'm gonna touch on that. Um, a few different things I would like to say here. Number one, you can wash the glass with just dish liquid and dry it really well. Number two, you can just get a paper towel and some alcohol and wipe the glass clean. But on top of that, I do wanna take it a step further. I have very dry hands and I do like to wear lotion all day throughout the day. I'm applying lotion to my hands. I do wash my hands before I'm gonna be glass painting because let's say that I have lotion on, on this hand and I'm touching it. And if that lotion has any you know, oils or emollients, the paint's not gonna stick as well. Um, even a little bit of hand sanitizer works really well. I probably should have kept painting while I was yapping right there. <laughs> you show us your hands. Okay, how many of you guys are following along and actually painting right now? Because that would be so cool if you were actually painting. But see, literally, I mean, if you could do a brush stroke, you can do this. And I'm probably not gonna totally finish it, but I do wanna move on to, to the next color, which is gonna be the pink. And here's the trick, do not rinse your brush, just dip right into the next color. Um, is that a good mm -hmm. angle? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that? Yeah, Elizabeth, thank you for being here. <laughs> it's kind of nice, you guys, to get out of the house. Um, I've been in quarantine with, you know, my 12-year-old daughter's at home with me. My husband works all day. And it's been really nice, but I have to tell you, it's nice to get out. <sighs> and it's, it's fun to be here at DecoArt for the day with you guys. Really quick, yeah. when, when you are ready to put glass in the oven, yes. what is the best way to put it in so it doesn't topple over on the rack? Okay, you can get a cookie sheet, um, put the cookie sheet down and then place your glass over the cookie sheet. Uh, now that being said, like let's say I was doing a solid application, I would maybe get a baby wipe and like wipe the bottom, make sure there's no paint on the very bottom before you set it on the cookie sheet. We're gonna move on to the soft lilac. Again, don't rinse your brush. It looks better if you don't. And we're just gonna keep going. And see if you look real close, you could see that there's a little bit of lavender and pink, and then you could see some of the fuchsia in, in the pink as well. Just makes it blend a lot prettier. And don't be too careful with your little brush strokes here, just start to go for it. And the other thing is, you know, who's to say you have to paint the entire vase? Um, this one I went up fairly high. Of course, this guy, I painted the entire thing. And then this one I went up about three quarters of the way. So it's up to you how you want to finish yours off. You could also start to sort of taper this off and go a little bit more sparing with your brush strokes as you go up. Okay, I'm gonna stop it right there, but I hope you guys got the idea. And I hope you like that one, because it's my favorite. <laughs> okay, moving on. Let's hope these don't wanna dance over there. Elizabeth, I'm gonna slide them on over to you. And I hope you guys stay till the end, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one vase from each technique and group them all together, which is really cool. If you use the same uh, color palette, you can do a variety of different uh, techniques, but still create a fun collection. So what's next, you guys? Next is color blocking. So let's take out some samples of that. 
Ooh. Ooh. Oh my gosh, you guys. On this one, I actually have six. <laughs> so bear with me. It's a lot. But that's okay. So let's start with like the most basic color blocking, which is this one. Now this is um, a monochromatic look. We're using coral, we're using pink, we're using fuchsia, and I did mix the fuchsia with white because I wanted it to look a little bit softer. So that's your basic color blocking, which I am gonna demo a little bit. And this is another one where you do not rinse your brush in between. You wanna use a nice, soft, flat brush and just sort of, again, go for it. This is not something that I would sketch out first or try to plan out. It's one of those that the more you think about it, it it's better if you don't think about it too much, if that makes sense. Okay. Kind of too, You're right. right. Elizabeth just said that it's kind of meditative too. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear her, but. Okay, we're gonna move on to this one, which is a combination of color blocking and using um, our deco art glass paint marker, which I love because what you're seeing here, you guys, is one single coat of that marker. So it's nice and opaque. Uh, this is the same idea. You start off with the color blocking and then come in with that um, black opaque marker and just scribble some, you know, really pretty simple modern flowers, I would say. Here's another one. This one, of course, already has flowers in it. Those are little uh, roses. Now, on the Michaels website, you guys will find the, um, I'll show you the entire pattern page, which is really cool. So that shows all three of the designs. And I do want to show you one more trick, which doesn't work for this, <laughs> but I think it's worth, you know, sharing. So here's one of the flower patterns. I cut it out. And let's say that you were not doing the color blocking, but you just wanted to take your glass paint marker and draw your flower and then paint, you know, within the flower. What you could do is get your vase, print out your pattern, roll it up, pop it right in, and, and there you don't even have to trace or anything. If you have a funky shaped vase like this, it's sort of round. I would take some tape and sort of, you know, tape it up, but there you go. All right, we are going to start color blocking. Let's see, which vase should we do, guys? We're going to do this one. And again, a flat, soft brush. I already have I already have some pink and fuchsia here. Let's add some coral. And I'm gonna add some white because I love this fuchsia, but for this look, I wanna soften it a little bit. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna start with the pink. Super random. Don't think about it too much, just do. <laughs> that's the meditative part. Yeah, that's the meditative part. Okay, I'm not going to rinse my brush and I'm going right into this coral. This is a pretty small vase, guys, so I think I'm going to just go ahead and finish the whole thing. Okay, now I'm going to mix a little bit of white with the fuchsia just to soften it up a little bit. Um, for the oven baking. Yes. Do you preheat the oven and then put it in? Okay, that, that's a good oven? question when it comes to, to baking. Okay, so this is what I do. And th this is what you should do. <laughs> this is coming from the lab, guys. Okay, you take your glass piece and put it in the oven. Um, 
Then you're going to turn it on to the 275. You're going to let it get to that 275 and you're going to leave it in for 30 minutes. You're going to turn the oven off and I, I like to open the oven door a little bit, um, let it cool and then you pull it out. Yeah. Yeah, this one is super easy. Um, now, I do want to, when I'm done here, I want to show you the, the coverage because I'm really impressed with the coverage on this paint. Okay, so that is one coat. I would do two if you look real close. There's a few, a few brush strokes and whatnot. This is two coats. And then you could see, you know, the satin sheen. This one looks glossy because it's wet, but it will dry looking like that. But it'll be a nice little set when we're done. Okay, we're gonna move this one aside. Thank you, Elizabeth. So this one, I sort of pre-did, you know, the base, and I'm gonna be demoing um, how to draw these flowers. Now, if you don't want a freehand, that's fine. Go ahead and take the patterns and transfer them. Um, if you write with the pencil on the glass paint, it will erase, guys, so. It will erase the paint? Or no, it will, it will erase, erase the pencil. So this is the DecoArt glass paint marker. This is the one mil, which is the thinner, which is my favorite because it's perfect for detail work. And I'm just going to go in and just start drawing some flowers. Hi. Hi. Hey, can you speak to the food safety issue with glass paint? And one more time for several people want to know, yes, where are these flower patterns exactly to download? We don't have them yet. Okay. No, no, they're that. Um, Michael's folks can help us answer okay, that. Okay, Michael's will help us answer that. Okay, but talk to, speak to the food safety issue. Okay, so Jennifer just came in with a great question. Um, we get this question all the time. It's regarding uh, the food safety aspect of using this paint. So while it is, uh, it has extremely low VOCs, um, and we use, you know, top quality ingredients and things of that nature, it is not deemed food safe. So let's say that I am painting a mug, um, and I might even have an example here, guys. Yeah, I do. Here's a really cute mug, and as you can see, I painted all of this part, splattered the bottom, but I did not paint up here. That's going to be making contact with liquids, making contact with your mouth. So I left that part unpainted. Um, another great tip is I love, well, I love painting on glass, but I love reverse painting on, you know, glass plates and things like that, or even painting right on top of the plate. And then what you could do is just take a clear glass plate and set it right over your design. So there's quite a bit you could do. So there's the flower. We're going for this look right here. I'm only going to do one just to show you. And we'll just add a little bit of details there. And that's that. You would do that all the way around. So before I move on to the next technique, does anybody have questions on the color blocking? That one was fun, right? We're going to move that one aside. But any questions on the color blocking? How do you prep that marker? I'm oh, you. okay. Here's a great point, you guys. Um, so when you first get these markers, you know, brand new, this is what you're going to do. You're going to give them a little shake. And they do have little ball bearing in there, which I love. After you give it a little shake, you're going to get a piece of paper, scratch paper. This one is already prepped, but I'm just going to demo. So you're going to give it a little shake, you're going to open it, and you're going to push down on that nib, and the, the paint will start to saturate the nib. And once you see that it's totally saturated and that it's flowing out nicely, it's ready to go.
Okay, so if we don't have questions on the color blocking, we're going to move on to the next technique, guys, and it is simple dots. So I did want to point out, of course, this is our um, paint that is designed specifically for glass, but it also works beautifully on ceramic. Now, by looking at these, I'll bet you can't even tell that one is glass and one is ceramic. <laughs> So, so this one is glass, and this one is ceramic. Yeah, you can't even tell the difference. So if you have some, you know, vases lying around at home and they don't match, you guys can make them match and make like a cute little set. So we are going to move on to that technique there because there's two different ways to do it, and we're going to start with using the glass paint marker. <laughs> okay, so here's the base. Um, this is already two coats of the turquoise, totally dried. You do want to wait for it to be totally dry to um, start creating your dots. Another thing you can play with is just the, um, like the spacing and the colors of your dots. See here, I decided to go real tight in the middle and then a little bit looser on the sides. And that's just to add added interest. This one is just sort of random sizes and randomly spaced. And I did go from light blue over to turquoise. Again, just for fun. So if you want, you know, super, super easy, well, actually the next technique is easy too, but <laughs> this is super easy. So I have the um, glass paint marker and I'm just gonna go and make dots. Now you could do this if you want really dainty, very, very tiny dots, but I don't, I want them a little bit larger than that. So I'm just gonna go in a little circular motion. Hopefully you guys can see that pretty well. Is this marker, why would you use the marker instead of a brush for this, is it? Well, actually you could use both. What, what I'm pointing out is this is the easiest way to make your little dots. And these come in a bunch of fun colors, you guys. Of course, I have the black one here. But you know, you have your red, your yellow, your fuchsia, your green, your blue, all kinds of fun colors. Um, Michaels also sells them in a set. Okay, so there's that. Now let's show the other easy way. So let's say there's a very specific um, paint color that you want to use that maybe doesn't come in the marker. So I like to use the back of my brush. Uh, let's do the pink, dip it in the pink and just sort of got it right on. And I think you can do like two every time. Okay guys, so there's that. So the turquoise with the pink and then turquoise with the black. Of course, you can come up with all kinds of, you know, different fun color combos there. I'm not sure if folks can see this, but when you do the dot, it yes. creates a little bit more texture too. So if you want yes. that, that look. Uh, can you see? Yeah. Okay. So depending on the look you want. Yes. But back to um, the marker, just real quick. I'm going to do one more flower, maybe just in the other way. But I just want, I wanted you guys to see how it glides. Completely effortlessly. There's no like spaces there. I'm doing, I'm a, a little bit of an awkward angle for me here, you guys. So I'm trying. But. <laughs> It's one of those types of flowers that doesn't have to be perfect, right? And then look at that, like how solid that black is. 
and then just little dots. And then we're gonna do see. Okay. But I hope that it, if there's one thing you guys are getting out of this, how some of these vases look so complex and when, when you look at the steps, you know, step by step, you can see how easy it, it actually is. It's super easy. All right, let's get some of these out of the way. Thank you, Elizabeth. And we are moving on to splatter. <laughs> so first I'm gonna show a few different kinds and show you why they look different. And you can sort of customize, you know, your splatter. What kind of splatter do you want? So let's start with this one that already has the cute little flowers in it. Um, I'm seeing a lot of the dots are a little bit more solid and less of like those little streaks that you see a lot in splatter. This one was created by adding very little water to that white paint before splattering it. And I'm going to show you the technique that I used. I just wanted you to see the difference. So there's that one, which is really cute. And I mean, when I think of splatter, sure, I think of the 80s, but I think it kind of never goes out of style. I mean, I think on this glass, it just looks so chic and so pretty. And this is a stemless wine glass, but I love that you could also use it as a vase really pretty and this one has two colors it has a little bit of the mint and the light blue okay now we're going to move on to this one where i did saturate the white quite a bit so you can see those streaks so you can kind of customize your splatter just depending on on what you know look you want and then i'll show you one more or I'm going to say we're going to revisit this one because I showed it to you when that came up about, you know, the food safe properties and things like that. But there's that one. Um, this was painted solid and then it has two splatter colors, the white and the mint. This was a spring project. That's super fun. All right. So now we're going to splatter, guys. On this one here. So this one i already painted in the fuchsia this is two coats it's already totally dry and i'm going to get a little bit of the white give it a little shake now as far as the size for the splatter um for this size vase i'm going with a small ish medium Round. And what I would do is before splattering on your actual vase, get a piece of uh, colored scrap paper or something that has some color. Well, I guess depending on the color that you're going to be, you know, splattering, something that has some contrast, and practice on that paper before you go onto your vase. So what you're going to do is you need two brushes because one of them is going to be what you're going to be, you know, tapping it on. So the trick is you have to add a good amount of water to really get that paint to flick and splatter. And sometimes it's not right the first time, you know, trial and error, have to do it a couple times. That's okay. All right. I feel like I need a third hand, but <laughs> I don't know. No, it's okay. <laughs> I just want you guys to be able to start. Okay, how about... <laughs> oh, oh, I got it, you guys. I found a roll of tape. Oh, and Perfect. Elizabeth was thinking the same thing, so I guess. Perfect. Okay, can everybody see that? All right, so I'm gonna hold the brush about, I don't know, three inches. And I'm taking the brush that is already saturated with the white paint and I'm just going to tap. Now I can't go all the way around, but I'm going to do just a little bit more. 
And you guys, there's literally dozens of way, ways to splatter um, and create different effects. This happens to be my favorite, and to me, it's the easiest. But it is fun to experiment with different types of splattering, but here we go. Like what, what would be a different way, a different brush? A lot of people use a toothbrush. And then there's a very specific brush that has like, uh, the bristles are about this long and they're very stiff and you just sort of go like this, but then you get your fingers all painty. I mean, this is just my favorite. <laughs> to me, it's the easiest, it's my favorite. Um, so let's take a close up look at that little guy. So imagine if you did a collection and all of your favorite colors, like how cute it would look. Do you always do a light splatter over a darker base? Absolutely you not. You can do a black splatter over a light color. Um, you can do, you know, just about any color combo you want. And then you could do like this one, you know, I did two different colors. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but that's white and mint over the coral, which is really springy and really pretty. Okay, so now we're gonna go backwards a little bit. You guys, we're gonna go back to, hey. Hey, so question, if, yeah. you have, if you make a mistake or you hate what you make, can you get rid of this paint or can you remove it somehow? That is a good question and the answer is yes. But you don't wanna wait because this paint is extremely durable, you guys. So once it cures on there, it is just not coming on. So as long as you, run it over you know warm water and just take like um a, a rag and even some dish soap it will it will come off for you but you have to do it you know i would say within a couple hours is a good good window so yeah um you know don't be afraid to experiment uh i know i'm, I'm biased because i just happen to love glass painting but it's really a lot easier than you think. Some of it is just, you know, getting that glass that's super smooth, getting your brush and just getting the feel for it because it is a lot slicker than a canvas or paper, whatever it is that, or wood, whatever it is that you might be used to. You just have to, you know, play around with it and get used to it. But we're, we are going to go backwards a little bit, you guys, back to the abstract base that I had started to sort of finish it off. Um, no. Where's the other one? Um, give me one sec, guys. It was hiding behind this one because that one is so big. Okay, so let me do this. As you can see, they're, they're pretty close. I, I do like how this one, you know, I added the white so it now has a softer look. You could stop right there if you wanted to. Um, but I want to add some of these cute little dots and and look they're not all the way around There are some large just random brush strokes just sort of here and there And these will look really cute, um, you know displayed together Okay, so I'm gonna set this one down and we are gonna start Adding dots to this one What size brush do we want? Probably this one And I'm going to start with white. And you want it in its pure form. You don't want it mixed with water. And I'm just going to start making little dots. And you could see for a white going over a color, look at how nicely that covers. I'm not going to do two coats. Don't need to. And I am making these dots in various sizes, not just one size. And I'm not going to go all the way around. Again, the more you think about it, um, not that your piece will be worse the more you think about it, but I'm just suggesting this is one of those don't think about it, just sort of go for it. Okay, so I'm done with the white there. Um, we want to achieve this look, so I'm going to incorporate some turquoise. Oh, and the, with these flip tops, you can do a one-handed action there while you're holding your paintbrush. <laughs> Ooh. 
All right, guys, so there's my turquoise. And I'm just going to go right in the middle. And on this, you, you can wait for the white to dry if you wish, or you can just sort of go right over the top. So that's five techniques. Gosh, that went by kind of fast, you guys. I hope everyone had fun. I hope you are um, encouraged to get creative. If you've never glass painted, I hope that you're encouraged to get out there, pick up some plain glass pieces and totally transform them and make them gorgeous. Oh, I'm back on this one. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, I really want to thank you for being here. It, it, it's so fun. I, I didn't feel like I was alone. I had all of you guys here with me. Hopefully, you rolled up your sleeves, you painted along. And if not, you just enjoyed it. You um, learned something and you're inspired to create. So thanks again, everyone. Thank you to Michaels for having me. This was a lot of fun. And, you know, we'll see. We might be doing some more coming up. So, so stay tuned, you guys, and happy crafting. Bye.